Good morning. Today is Thursday, the second week of Lent. Uh, this Mass is offered for the 42nd wedding anniversary of June and Gloria Laxon, and uh, also a Thanksgiving Mass for Remy Baloyot for all her siblings and family. And the Mass is also, let's also pray for the deceased, Nelia Mendoza, Leon Shukinjagan, and for the sick, Gerald Gomez, Bill Rivera, Isalia Ippolito, Maria Teresa Gutierrez, and Elvira Reyes. For the deceased is Yap T, E T. Good morning. My cousin contacted me from Florida yesterday and asked me to remember a friend of his, Margot Dugard, uh, in prayer today. So I'm asking for all of us to join in that petition as well as the regular one for this Mass and any other names that were shared. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord be with you. Thank you. As we begin, let us pause to open our spirit to God's great mercy and love. Lord, you call us to be your disciples. Lord, have mercy. You heal us of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. You anoint us with your Holy Spirit. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive all our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And let us pray. O God, who delight in innocence and restore it, direct the hearts of your servants to yourself, that caught up in the fire of your spirit we may be found steadfast in faith and effective in works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet, from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, Cursed is the man who trusts in human beings, who seeks his strength in flesh, whose heart turns away from the Lord. He is like a barren bush in the desert that enjoys no change of season, but he stands in a lava waste, he salt and empty earth. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose hope is in the Lord. He is like a tree planted beside the waters that stretches out the roots to the stream. It fears not the heat when it comes, its leaves stay green. In the year of drought, it shows no dis distress, but still bears fruit. More tortuous than all else is the human heart, beyond remedy, who can understand it? The Lord alone probed the mind and test the heart to reward everyone according to his ways, according to the merit of his deeds. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed are they who hope in the Lord. Blessed are they who hope in the Lord. <clears throat> Blessed the man who follows not the counsel of the wicked, nor walks in the way of sinners, nor sits in the company of the insolent, but delights in the law of the Lord and meditates in his law day and night. Blessed, Blessed are, are they, they who hope, hope in the Lord. Lord. He is like a tree, plant near running water, that <clears throat> yields its fruit in the season, and whose leaves never fade. Whatever he does prospers. Blessed, Blessed are, they are they who hope, hope in the Lord. Lord. Not so, the wicked not so. They are like chaff which the wind drives away. For the Lord watches over the way of the just, but the way of the wicked 
vanishes. Blessed are they who hope in the Lord. Praise and honor to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Praise and honor to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed are they who have kept word with a generous heart and yield the harvest through perseverance. Praise and honor to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to the Pharisees, there was a rich man who dressed in purple, gar <clears throat> in purple garments and fine linen and dined sumptuously each day. And lying at his door was a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who would gladly have eaten his fill of the scraps that fell from the rich man's table. Dogs even used to come and lick his sores. When the poor man died, he was carried away by angels to the bosom of Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried, and from the netherworld where he was in torment, he raised his eyes and saw Abraham far off and Lazarus at his side. And he cried out, Father, Abraham, have pity on me. Send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am suffering torment in these flames. Abraham replied, my child, remember that you received what was good during your lifetime while Lazarus received what was bad. But now he is comforted here, whereas you are tormented. Moreover, between us and you, a great chasm is established to prevent anyone from crossing who might wish to go from our side to yours or from your side to ours. He said, then I beg you, Father Abraham, send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers so that he may warn them, lest they too come to this place of torment. But Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them listen to them. He said, Oh no, Father Abraham, but if someone from the dead goes to them, then they will repent. Then Abraham said, If they will not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded if someone should rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. The uh, scriptures that we hear uh, any day of the week often are contrasting scriptures, or they deal with a contrast. In this case, is a real strong one. It's contrasting those who are tied up only with the material and, and sinful and an and empty kind of life, even though they might have a lot of stuff, it's kind of empty. And then those who are poor, but they are able to be enriched deep in the spirit. And there's an added piece to this today because we get to see our part in, the, in this, our choice. So Jeremiah is real clear. Jeremiah was one of the prophets that suffered a lot and, and struggled. And he's crying out to God in this portion of the scripture that we have today. He's telling God, why am I being punished for all the good that I'm doing as a prophet? This isn't fair. And he contrasts the, the richness of God's love with the emptiness, desert-like emptiness of people who stray away from God. And therefore, as he is trying to live out this relationship with God, he's asking for the blessings that come with it. Then in the gospel, Jesus is contrasting in this story that he tells somebody who has a lot of stuff but is empty and somebody who is poor and yet is open and ready to receive from God. And what happens is, in this particular life, this rich, wealthy man who eats, and it says, sumptuously every day. And by the way, a little detail. Jesus doesn't give him a name. He remains nameless, although he's got everything. But he gives the name Lazarus to this poor man. This poor man who, who sits outside, lies outside, just wishing he could eat the crumbs or scraps that fall from the rich man's table. Just longing for that. That's how poor and hungry he is. It says even the dogs will come and lick his sores. He just was a, in a hopeless situation. And then they both die. Everything changes. The rich man ends up 
very poor, destitute. Here he is in hell, the description of hell, the tormenting flames, on fire but not burning up, just suffering. And interestingly, he cries out, and of all people to ask to help him, he asks that Abraham would send Lazarus, the one that he never helped, the one that he wouldn't even give the scraps or crumbs from his table. He asks for him to be sent, to dip his finger in, a, in some water and just to put it on his tongue to ease some of his torment. And of course, the conversation goes back and forth. Abraham says, we can't cross to your side, you can't cross to our side, that's the way it is, blah, blah, blah. Then he says this, and it's as if there's a, a moment, a moment in his life where he at least is concerned about someone else, his five brothers. Was it all just its family and you watch out for family? Or was there something that moved in him or changed? And he said, then please send someone to tell my five brothers so that they don't end up here like me. Save them if you can't save me. And then, lo and behold, the whole story turns on us. It turns on us, slaps us right in the face. And his answer is, let them let listen to the prophets. They, they won't listen to them. But if somebody were to come back from the dead, and our eyes open wide as we say, uh-oh, we know someone who came back from the dead. So that all of his words ought to penetrate, and, and just because Jesus Christ came back from the dead, do we all listen? Hmm. Two days ago... <clears throat> I saw some more dreadful news on television. Um, this man that went and stabbed a 17-year-old boy to death, he's out there waiting for his parents to pick him up from school. What a, what a surprise they got. And, and no particular reason that, that was evident, at least as far as I've heard so far, there was no knowledge of this kid. But either this man was mentally ill which is a very good chance, or he's just filled with hatred for whatever reason. I can't think of any other reason. Mentally ill or just filled with hatred. And that stuff exists out there. Thanks be to God it isn't the majority. It's a tiny minority, but it's an awful minority. And so I asked myself, you know, this scripture is asking us to become not aware, but super aware, super aware of the need for goodness and, and spirituality and, and life-giving spirit of God to fill our lives and direct our thinking, direct our choices, our values. And the further we get from God, and it can be kind of innocent and we just aren't putting in the time. We aren't opening our spirit to God. But the further we get from God, the more likely, I think, is that we can become desert-like, empty and barren. Uh, we're here every day of the week. So in theory, anyway, we should be the most super aware as we keep feeding our minds and hearts with the Word of God and allowing it to open up our spirit. And today, Jesus says it directly. He, I could change the word and say, look, I'm going to die, but I'm going to come back from the dead. So all these things I'm telling you, listen, hear me, or do you need to wait until I come back from the dead? Then will you open up and hear me? But it just simply states the fact that hmm, even if someone should rise from the dead, even then maybe people will not listen. So as we open our hearts to this word of God today, the first step is to really listen. And I think to myself, there's lots of Lazaruses around, lots of them, like 40,000 homeless living on the streets. And, uh, you know, none of us could solve that problem. None of us could solve it. But we can touch it. We can influence it. We can even just pray for it. But in any case, there's a lot of Lazaruses, Lazari, all over the place. 
And I think Jesus is calling upon us to do something, to say something, to be something more. <clears throat> Please stand. Let us lift up our needs and our prayers to our loving God. For the church, may the Holy Spirit increase the gifts of the body of Christ and inspire us in spreading the gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For government leaders across the world, may God's wisdom inspire them in their efforts to protect the dignity and sanctity of life from conception to natural death. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who struggle to forgive others, may the Lord soften their hearts and lead them to their ways of mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this community of faith, may God's love bind us more closely to each other and bring relief to those suffering in our midst. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially those who have no one else to pray for them, may they be welcomed by God into this heavenly kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our special petitions, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Again, for all the people of Ukraine and Russia who are struggling and suffering through a time of war, and for the people who have suffered so greatly in Syria and Turkey because of the earthquakes, for healing and peace for that land, we pray to the Lord. Loving God, we lift all our needs to you. We open our spirit to you and to your love. We ask everything in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. Pray, my sisters and brothers, our gifts may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. By this present sacrifice, we pray, O Lord, sanctify our observance, that what Lenten discipline outwardly declares, it may inwardly bring about, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty, our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God. For you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, that freed from disordered affections they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so, with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaoth, plenis uncheli et terra gloria tua, Hosanna in excelsis, benedictus qui venit in nomine Domini, Hosanna in excelsis. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. 
for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Jose, our Bishop, all the clergy, all your people. Remember Margot Dugard and all of her special needs and hopes. And we especially lift up today June and Gloria Laxon on their 42nd wedding anniversary and many blessings for their marital love. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, especially Yap E. T. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and St. Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and martyrs, with Bernard, our patron, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray together in the words that Jesus has taught us. As we say, Our Father... Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Thank you. Let us share with each other a sign of Christ's peace. Agnus <clears> Dei, <throat> qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, dona nobis pacem. This is Jesus the Christ who has come to take away our sin and bring us life eternal. How blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord,
Let us pray. <clears throat> Abide with your servants, O Lord, who implore the help of your grace, that they may receive from you the support and the guidance of your protection through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I uh, notice in the Mass that there are there's little climactic moments. I think the Our Father is one. But another one that's uh, directly connected with that is the, the prayer that immediately follows the Our Father. And for me, it's, it's climactic for two reasons. One is it's preparing us to receive communion. You know, before we approach the Lord and come to receive the bread of life, we, we pray for peace, and we pray for peace among us, and that peace prayer follows. But this one um, also, I think, um, marks us as people in need of grace uh, so that the love of God hits us uh, all the time and, and that we're always trying to open to it. So we say, I say in, in the name of all of us, deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope of the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. I just think that that spirit of that prayer is the one that just opens us, opens us, opens us, so that as we eat and take into our bodies that bread of life, that we truly are fed at the deepest level of our spirit. And if that happens at the deepest level of our spirit, it just keeps forming us more and more and more into a people of God. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless us all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. And we need a little prayer for this anniversary couple, okay? If we could all extend our hands. Lord, we ask your blessing on June and Gloria for their 42nd anniversary of marriage, that you continue to bless them. They already got that beautiful little grandchild there with them, so uh, that's just another blessing in their life. But bless this love that they committed themselves to 42 years ago, that it may continue to thrive in their lives and thrive between them and bring blessing not only to them but to their family, to all of us who know them. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. Amen. Happy anniversary. And they're accepting any hugs and kisses you want to give them, okay? They're free today. <laughs> ding, 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 yes. <laughs>